Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Zuo Yong, and uh, I am from Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics. Uh, my major is chemistry, and I will make a presentation entitled Improve the Compatibility Between Molten Source and uh, Alloy Materials by Electrochemical Techniques. Uh, it is known that uh, Molten source as coolants uh, for the nuclear reactors uh, possess many advantages. Uh, low vapor pressure, stable chemical properties, good compatibility with structural materials, and uh, good solubility for the nuclear fuel. Uh, according to the successful experience of MSRE and uh, AMP program, um, these fluoride Molten salts are considered as candidate coolants for the TMSR. Mm, this is uh, the molten salt test loop for the heat uh, transfer designed by our department. Mm. In real uh, molten salt uh, reactor system, this part may be the reactor core, and this may be the heat exchanger connected to the electrical power plant. Uh, the yellow pipe means the fluid molten source. Uh, the harmony contact between the molten source and the structure materials uh, is crucial for the whole uh, molten salt reactor system. Uh, however, the compatibility between the molten source and uh, uh, the uh, alloy materials may be affected by uh, these three factors. Uh, the first one is the oxidizing impurities exist in the molten salts. Uh, the second is the oxidizing effect of the nuclear fission. Uh, and uh, the third is the oxide impurity, which may also cause some uh, incompatibility problems. These slides shows the typical oxidizing impurities exist, uh, 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 exist in the molten salt and the corroding reactions caused by them. From these reactions, uh, we can see that water is the biggest impurity uh, because water can lead to a series of uh, corroding reactions. We can see that some first corroding products may corrode the alloy for the second time. Mm. The CrF2 uh, may tend to be Cr, uh, tend to be corrosive CrF3 uh, with the aid of carbon in flink uh, molten salts, uh, and uh, the sulfate may directly corrode the alloy at high temperature. So uh, we shall make our efforts to. Uh, remove these impurities from the molten salts. This slide shows the oxidizing effect of the nuclear fission. Uh, for the experience of uh, MSRE, when one more of uranium uh, undergo fission uh, in reactor, uh, about 0 0.8 more of electron will be lost, and then cause an oxidizing effect. Uh, in other words, we can see that about 0 0.4 more of fluorine gas can be produced uh, when one more of uranium consumed in a reactor. Uh, actually, this is, uh, this is a slight oxidizing effect, uh, but it may cause the corroding reaction goes to worse direction. The oxide impurity uh, may not corrode the alloy uh, directly, but it may cause other uh, problems. In a reactor with pure salts as coolants, the oxide content in the molten salts should be controlled below 100 ppm to prevent the formation of barium oxide uh, precipitation. In the reactors with 
Uh, liquid fuel source as coolant, the oxide content should be controlled more strictly uh, because the solubility of uranium and thorium oxide in a molten source is much lower than that of uh, beryllium oxide. Uh, the oxide content in this system should be controlled below uh, 30 ppm according to the suggestions from MSRE. And this is a challenge for us. The hydrogen process for the purification of the molten salts employed by MSRE is now carried out in our laboratory. Most of the oxidizing impurities can be removed by this process. For our experience, this process may face, may face some uh, challenges. Uh, for example, the industrial flu uh, hydrogen fluoride may, may not be used directly because of the uh, high content of water and uh, sulfate in it. We must uh, purify it before use. Uh, uh, other challenges like security problem and uh, corrosion prevention from uh, hydrogen fluoride uh, should also be considered. These challenges and then limit this process to act as an online purification process, uh, which may be needed in a working molten salt loop. Therefore, we proposed an online electrochemical process for the purification of molten salts. We use an SOM. A tube with zinc inside uh, as allowed to remove the oxide. Uh, SOM means solid <coughs> oxide membrane and it is made from yttrium stabilized zirconium oxide. Uh, the cathode is made from uh, graphite or uh, foam nickel. Uh, when DC current is applied on this uh, electrodes, the oxide ion uh, may get through the SOM and be collected as zinc oxide inside the tube. And the other oxidizing <coughs> impurities can be reduced or deposited on the cathode. And this process is uh, simple and easy to control, and uh, it is maybe uh, employed for uh, online processing. Uh, the challenge of this process may be the stability of the SOM uh, itself. The research work about the SOM process uh, is ongoing in our laboratory, and uh, now I can only provide a preliminary uh, results. Uh, the above is the experimental conditions, and after seven hours constant current uh, electrolysis the content in the uh, the oxide content in the blink molten source decreases from 545 to 283 ppm uh, about 48% of the oxide was removed mm. and uh, the current efficiency was 67% uh, Uh, this is the potential record during the constant current electrolysis. Uh, the potential was controlled not to exceed 3 volts to avoid side reactions. And this is the SOM electrode uh, before and uh, after electrolysis. Uh, more work needs to be done to examine the performance of the SOM electrode. And this is the electrolytic <coughs> cell employed in the experiment. Uh, all of the high temperature electrochemical uh, experiments were carried out in uh, a vacuum tube furnace uh, protected by this glove box. Mm. Now we know uh, 
Removing impurities from the molten salts can improve its compatibility with the alloy materials, but this action may not eliminate the corrosion totally. Uh, even if all of the impurities were removed, uh, the corrosion reactions may also happen due to some other reasons, such as the oxidizing effect of nuclear fission uh, or the air imported during loop uh, operation. So some other corrosion con control techniques must be considered in the molten salt uh, reactor system. Uh, Redox potential adjusting is the most uh, often used method to achieve uh, corrosion prevention in molten salts. Uh, in the following, I will talk some considerations about the redox potential control for the TMSR. Uh, fluorine potential can be used to quantitatively describe the redox condition of the molten source. And this is the definition of fluorine potential. Uh, well, Tf2 means the partial pressure of the fluorine gas in the uh, molten salt system. Mm. The fluorine potential can be controlled uh, by at least uh, three uh, methods, according to Olander. Uh, that is uh, by using gases uh, or metals or dissolvable redox carbons. Mm. When these reactions come to be equilibrated, uh, the fluorine potential can be uh, calculated while the um, partial pressure or activities of related substances. Moreover, the redox potential of the molten salts uh, with certain fluorine partial pressure can be evaluated by this uh, equation, uh, where the R F minus means the fluoride activity in different molten salts, and then we can compare the the value the values of the redox potential in different molten salts. Uh, with, with the concept of fluorine potential, we can evaluate the corrosion ability of the molten salts. Uh, the equilibrated concentration of structural materials in molten salts can be calculated via these, these uh, reactions. We take chromium and iron as examples because they are the most easily corroded elements in a, in a nickel or iron based alloy. Uh, the calculated uh, more, more fraction of CRF2 and uh, FEF2 were listed uh, in a table. Uh, from these results, we can choose a suitable redox carbon to control the corrosion. Uh, for example, the UF3 and UF4 uh, redox carbon was choosing to control the redox potential in MSRE and obtain the satisfactory uh, results. From these calculations, we can also say uh, the alloy may be well protected by these metal containing uh, redox carbons. However, uh, some other characters of the metal containing redox carbon should be considered before we draw this conclusion. Uh, that is the re, re, uh, redox buffering capacity. Although the calculated fluorine potential controlled by the metal containing redox carbon is very low, the redox buffering capacity of the carbon is actually limited. Due to the poor solubility of, uh, due to the poor metal solubility in molten salts, an effective way to improve the redox buffering capacity is to use uh, dissolvable redox carbons like UF4 and UF3. Uh, oh, sorry. 
and these these uh, dissolvable carbons were were proposed by D. S. Williams from Oak Ridge uh, National Laboratory. Um, however, the impact of these of these uh, substances on the uh, physical properties of the molten salts should be examined carefully before they can really be used. The development of reference electrodes in fluoride molten salts should also be mentioned because uh, it is the basis for the redox potential measuring and uh, controlling. Uh, these three reference electrodes uh, were prepared in our uh, laboratory and their, and their lifetime are about uh, two days to two weeks. Non-life reference electrode in fluoride molten salts uh, it's still a challenge for electrochemists. Mm. Oxidizing impurities and some corrosion products may cause incompatibility problems uh, of the molten salts and the structural materials. Uh, the SOM process may act, act as an easy controlled online purification method for the molten salts. Um, the redox potential adjusting is an effective corrosion controlled method on condition that uh, a redox carbon with proper buffering capacity exists in a molten salts. And uh, non-life reference electrode in fluoride molten salts is their challenge for electrochemists. Mm. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Mark Halper, blogging for the Weinberg Foundation. I'm just wondering how corrosive the salts are. Um, um, if everything else was ready with a molten salt reactor today, um, how long would one last? How, how long would these alloys last? Or would it, be even, would it be inadvisable to even start one up, given the state of corrosiveness? The corrosion may be uh, impacted by many factors. Uh, uh, I just talk about three factors, uh, but that's not all, all the uh, factors. Many other, uh, uh, many other factors may uh, cause uh, corrosion, such as the temperature, um, uh, the different temperature, different temperature uh, this, uh, this trip in the uh, molten salt loop mm. or the radioac radioactive effective may also cause uh, uh, alloy corrosion. If you could build a thorium molten salt reactor tomorrow, um, uh, would you turn it on uh, given the, uh, the state of corrosiveness? Is, 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 uh, is that a, a major flaw at the moment? I'm, obviously, I'm talking uh, theoretically here, but, um, uh, you know, are you talking marginal improvements to the state of uh, corrosion, or um, do we have a serious corrosion problem in theory? Uh, my major mm -hmm. is uh, chemistry and, uh, and, and uh, not uh, materials. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh. Uh, my name is Yashoka from Molten Soft Forum. Uh, control of redox potential is one of the key technology in MSR. Uh, let me ask you a, a study a approach to this technology. Are you planning to both mental pro uh, Are you going to study on both on experimental study and besides some theoretical approach for this issue. You, you, you are going to show some experimental result, but uh, uh, this is a kind of a electrochemical process. So mm. I'm not sure, I'm, uh, maybe it may be possible to establish some kind of theory based on electrochemical theory for redox potential control. Professor Yoshoka, uh, I think this question is a little bit uh, escaped from his research scope. So maybe some staff uh, working for material science 
they may give some uh, comments or answer your question. If anyone here from Synap, yes, please, uh, Dr. Huai. Okay, uh, actually, I will give a talk uh, tomorrow uh, about this uh, material issues, but today I will give some comments on that. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. So has made some uh, theoretical calculation on the uh, free energy, the Gibbs free energy of the, these various uh, type of uh, fluorides, uh, including the, the metal, uh, the metal uh, like chromium fluorides, and compare each other to determine whether it will be a uh, major effect for corrosion. So uh, actually, so his work, I think, has both sides, both experimental and the theoretical side. Oh, thank you very much for a nice uh, comment. Of course, uh, as a chemist, you, you studied the uh, chemical properties of these uh, molten salts, but this is not the only, uh, only issue. Uh, one of them is neutronic properties of molten salts. Uh, is there also a study we're going to see about uh, what kind of neutron flux you get out with uh, which of those uh, molten salts? And also, I assume there are some efforts to find salts that don't moderate too much the neutron flux to get the hardest possible neutron flux. Uh, I mean, it's not a question directly for you, but uh, just to point out that uh, we need to also understand neutronic properties of these uh, salts. Uh, this question is not considered by us, maybe by um, the Department of uh, Material. I would like to thank you, the four speakers, including the young people. Thank you.